Every other edition that I have of this speech runs this line together. Despise me if I do not. In the first folio, it's its own line, despise me. I consider that to be uh, Elizabethan uh, subliminal advertising, as Tina Packer, I think, says. He, Shakespeare, is telling the audience right off the bat, hate me, despise me. And he says it here, he says, abhor me to Rodrigo, just before that. And then he says, despise me, da da, da da, da da, if I do not. Three great ones of the city, and he goes on. And I, I just love that. I'm John Ali. I'm an actor. I had a, an English teacher who was um, tough, and she assigned us Julius Caesar. But um, she soon figured out of everybody in the class that she could give me all the roles to read. So <laughs> it had a good impact on me. And I had a, um, like an old Folger paperback of Julius Caesar that my mother had used, I think, when she studied in college. So it, uh, it had all of her notes in it. So I got to compare her notes to what my teacher was teaching us, and it kind of opened up a world of interpretation for me, I think. I was Puck, which I went on to play multiple times in the opera version by Benjamin Britten. Um, and I got to fly, <laughs> flying by Foy. So, in fact, one time I was, um, I was doing it for LA Opera. We were performing on the stage at the Wiltern Theater before they moved to the Dorothy Chandler. And um, the rope handler was not in the wing where he was supposed to be. So I said something like, you know, in 40 minutes, and you know, off I go. And I'm grabbing for the rope, and he's not there. And I swing back on stage. Got, you know, the biggest laugh of the night. But uh, that, was, that was my first Shakespeare. Working with Shakespeare brought me back to acting. I think in a way, it kind of saved my life. Because I had stopped for many years, and I regularly attended Shakespeare plays, and then, you know, kind of felt the pull to go back to the stage. And it was because of the exploration of Shakespeare uh, that I was able to really ground myself as an actor again and yank myself back into it. Colored pencils, lots of colored pencils, I think. <laughs> I say that because when I'm working on Shakespeare, it's like a, res a research project. So there are so many layers that you keep building, or I've heard people talk about peeling an onion, but I prefer to think of it as putting things on, building like a lasagna, for instance. So I, I use my colored pencils for meaning, for you know, definitions, for uh, for verse, uh, for rhetoric, um, emphasis, line endings, whatever comes to mind. Uh, and I just mark up my script like a score. So yeah, colored pencils. I love the character. And this particular uh, monologue of his is very dense. It's got a lot of strange vocabulary. Uh, there are a lot of references to people who aren't there, and I love that challenge of trying to make sense of it all. Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city, in personal suit to make me his lieutenant, off cap to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price, I am worth no worse a place, but he, in loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance, horribly stuffed with epithets of war, and in conclusion, non suits my mediators. For certs, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician, one Michael Cassio, a Florentine, a fellow, almost damned in a fair wife, 
that never set a squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows more than a spinster, unless the book is theoric, wherein the toged consuls can propose as masterly as he. Mere prattle without practice is all his soldiership, but he, sir, had the election, and I, of whom his eyes had seen the proof at Rhodes, at Cyprus, and on other grounds, Christian and heathen must be believed and calmed by debitor and creditor. This counter, caster, he in good time must his lieutenant be, and I, God bless the mark, his more ships, ancient.